Hi, my name is Maureen. I also go by Mo. This is an energy medicine yoga class. Uh, energy medicine yoga is inspired by Donna Eden and Lauren Walker. Um, it combines traditional yoga asanas and poses with ancient energy traditions and techniques. Some of you might recognize with Chinese medicine, Qigong. Um, but just uh, stay in the class and keep an open mind. Uh, we'll get energy flowing through your meridians, we'll strengthen your aura, and we'll bolster the bridges that um, link body to mind to spirit. All right. Take a comfortable seated position on your mat. Lift your hips with a folded towel or blanket. Place your sit bones on there and cross your legs with ankles on your mat. And just rock me side to side with your sit bones. Getting a little um, blood flow to the pelvis and broadening your base. You can broaden your base further by placing hands uh, around the thigh and just lifting um, up and back. Just creating a little space, an inner twist of the thighs. Finding that broad base, uh, let's take a few moments to center. And to center, the invitation is to draw your attention inward. To do that, uh, it helps to close your eyes. Or if um, that's not good for you, then just lower your gaze. You're trying to reduce distractions. And just come a little closer to your body. Our awareness, our attention is pulled in many different directions. And for this class, we want to pull it all back into your center, to your home base. Let that be a well-worn path back to center. So just taking a big, exaggerated, deep breath in. Feel your collarbones lift, your ribs expand, your lungs fill. And then exhaling out, either through the nose or through an open mouth. Doing a couple of those, just to clear, like a sweep, like a broom, sorry, sweeping the body, sweeping the mind. Blow it out. Big exhale, just as big of an exhale as, uh, as big of the exaggerated inhale. And then eventually let the, the big, deep, exaggerated breaths go, settle in, and notice where your body is supported on the mat, on a blanket. And just let your body be held by the earth. And then let your body hold your consciousness. Feel steady, feel stable, feel held. And now I invite you to narrow the focus of your awareness just to the breath. Zoom in, telescope into the breath. Draw your attention to the nostrils, just the outside edge, just the gateway where the breath enters the body. Paying attention to the sensation, the physical sensation of the breath entering at the nostrils in through the nose. And let your awareness follow the breath as it moves through your body. Well, pranayama is a breath practice. It just um, adds a layer of control or intention or distinct awareness to the breath. And I just want to give you two um, Sanskrit words describing um, a pathway, a vayu, and um, a direction of the breath. And that's brahmana, which is an upward flowing breath, which is an energizing, lifting breath. Think about an inhale to lift up, lengthen, and extend, brahmana. And langana, which is a downward flowing, grounding breath. And using um, these breaths intentionally combined with body movement uh, can work to shift feelings, can work to shift emotions, can work to shift your energy. 
So if you are feeling sluggish, if you're feeling tired, as you come to this practice, then you're going to focus on brahmana. And in poses, you're going to focus on rising up, lifting up, filling up. And if you're feeling anxious or agitated, unsettled, then I'm going to invite you to focus on langana breath, which is downward flowing. Plant helps to plant your body, connect to the earth, feel grounded and steady. And we'll do that now. Just a little focus on the upward flowing breath. No um, instructions on how long to hold that inhale. Just inhale brahmana. And exhale langana. I just invite you to do that for two more rounds on your own. Inhale, Brahmana, and, and visualize lifting your energy. Feel the breath move up the spine, almost like a, a light up. And on the exhale, it can be either be out through your nose or out through your mouth, the Langana breath, downward moving breath, down the spine, down the body, back into the earth, grounding, connecting, steadying. And now wherever you're at with that practice, let it go when you finish your exhale. Return to your normal breath and bring your hands to Anjali Mudra. Just blink your eyes open as I share this mudra. This is the Lotus Mudra from um, the prayer pose with palms and fingertips connecting. You just open the three inside fingers, but keep the pinky finger and the thumb connected and the base of the palm connected and then place the thumbs at your sternum. This, the name is called Lotus Mudra, as I mentioned, and the symbolism of it is giving and receiving. So it's giving like a, a flower would give to its pollen to the bees. And with your um, fingers, like a, a, like a chalice, it is for receiving. So ask for what you need. Set an intention. And hold that intention at the front of your heart as we practice. Take a big, deep, exaggerated breath in, fill up. And then let it go on your exhale. And release your hands to your thighs and blink your eyes open. Just gentle shoulder rolls. Shoulder rolls. <laughs> Lift your shoulders up and take them back. And then add the elbows in. Keep the shoulders rolling. Just let the elbows begin to enter the circle. And then add the wrist circles while you're doing the shoulders and the elbows. And then straighten the arms and make them full arm circles. Just let this wake up your shoulders, your side body, your back, your chest. And release your arms down to the sides. Uh, plant your sit bones into the ground, pull your belly in and inhale, arms out wide and up high for a few sun breaths. Lengthen through the spine, look up. Exhale, turn your palms away and ground your energy right back to your center. In Qigong, the lower Dantian is below the navel. Inhale. Arms out wide, up high, look up, lift up. Brahmana, and turn your palms away and exhale, Lungana. I can spell those for you. Last one. Inhale, uplifting, energizing, lengthening, Brahmana breath. And turn your palms away, exhale, grounding, steadying, stabilizing breath. And release and let it go. We're going to do the energy wake up um, seated. If you've done this class with me before, we often do it standing, but you can do it seated and you could do this throughout the day, seated in your chair at your desk, just to break things up. It lasts about three minutes. For this uh, wake up, you do a breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. You have to remember that. That's the hardest thing to remember. Otherwise, I'll guide you through it. Two fingers meet the thumbs. Find where your collarbones almost meet, come down and move out until you find a little indentation. Circle, You'll, you should be able to circle and find it. it's underneath your collarbone. And then with those beak fingers, begin tapping vigorously as you breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. 
The whole point of this is to release stagnant energy. So make some noise when you exhale. And you're pounding with uh, intention. You could thump, you could even use your fist like Tarzan. You can alternate it. This is the end of the kidney meridian, K27, the 27th point on the kidney meridian. Kidney one starts on the sole of your foot. So tapping here lifts all of your, um, wakes up all of your energy systems, all the meridians. There's 14 main meridians, but really there's more than that. Take a single hand. The second point is the center of your sternum. Think right where the ribs meet and right where the uh, collarbones almost meet. Come to the center of it and begin tapping. If there's any pain when I ask you to tap in these locations, you can um, just circle. Avoid pain, but uh, if not, then you're going to be doing it. If there's no pain, then do a vigorous tapping. Breathing in through the nose. Breathing out through the mouth. Did you forget that? Keep that going. Tapping in this location is a stimulation to the immune system. You just do any one of these things. If you can remember it outside of this yoga class, great point to tap at any time of day. It's related to the thymus in Chinese medicine. Now bring both hands um, up to the upper side ribs and you can use the inside of your fist, tap or the big fingers, or you can circle, or you can just use the palm of the hand. Whatever you can do, whatever you can reach. Tapping here is the end of the spleen meridian, breathing in through the nose, Breathing out through the mouth. You're meant to do that for every breath cycle as we do this energy wake up. Into the spleen meridian. Uh, the, the, this is spleen is, um, in Chinese medicine, is all about metabolism. You can bring those big fingers around underneath the breast. You're tapping the ribs. You can go down towards the waist. Breathing in through the nose. Breathing out through the mouth. Let it go. Uh, the last of the tapping is this orbital bone underneath your eye, light fingertips roll, breathing in through the nose, breathing out through the mouth. It's the bone, it's not the fleshy part of the eyes, there should be no pain. Uh, this is the beginning of the stomach meridian and is very grounding for the energy that we're lifting. Breathing in through the nose, continue just tapping all around the face, mm, all around the face. You're activating, there's many different um, energy points on your face, right here at the edge of the eye, it's triple warmer. Coming up to the forehead, there's many powerful energy points. So just tapping, tapping, rolling. And uh, why don't we tap the top of the head up to the crown, down to the base of the skull at your neck, back up to the crown. You can make some noise, you can tap a little harder. Uh, side head to the ears, tap behind the ears and down the neck. Tap back up to the top of the ears and then reach in and massage your ears. <sighs> Hundreds of acupressure, acupuncture or acupressure points on your ears. Um, just going uh, squeezing, pulling, uh, rubbing, and uh, don't forget the ear lobes. And then that point right at, uh, behind the ear lobes, uh, if you put, press right there, that's very helpful for uh, deactivating the fight or flight response within. Um, that's it, Brush your hands off. Now, just take one hand to one knee and then flip. Same, same side, just doing this a couple of times, you can lift up a little higher. Uh, this is a homolateral energy pattern, same side. Our body does not prefer that, but we acknowledge that we sometimes slip into this and then we shake it off and we cross over. The body is full of crossover patterns from the cellular level on up to the way we walk, to the way we see. Um, energy wants to move. Energy needs space to move, which is why we do yoga, to create space in our bodies. And then energy likes to move in certain patterns, uh, which is it, forward and crossing over are the two um, primary patterns that we focus on in energy medicine. Add a little twist, look side to side, lift the arm up as high as you can, Tap, 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 one more time each side, and let it go. Bring your hands down to the base of the body near the pubic bone, crossing one hand on top of the other. I, I, I don't, I did ask you to set an intention, but if I forgot, then I want you to set an intention now. And then uh, as you begin your inhale, draw your fingertips, the breath, and your intention up through the central meridian. It's a single word, quality, characteristic, and aspiration. And exhale, palms turn away as you smooth it out. Think of embodying your intention with this. Inhale, hands at the base of the body. 
as you begin the inhale, draw fingertips, the breath, and your intention right up through your central meridian up overhead and exhale, smooth it out. Last one. Exhale out the mouth. And place one finger on your navel, one finger between the eyebrows, lightly press in and lift up. Keep breathing in through the nose. And out through the mouth. With your fingers in this position, you are creating a circuit, an energy circuit, connecting your central meridian to the governing meridian. And it's very stable, or it's very centering, stabilizing, grounding. Breathe that one more time in through the nose. And now through the mouth. And let that go. Now I would like to invite you to return to breathing in and out through the nose, the yogic breath. Press down through your sit bones. Inhale, lift your arms up overhead, grow up long and tall. That's the Brahmana. Exhale, that right hand touches the ground. As you side bend over to the right, Langana. Exhale, grounding, down, connecting. And inhale back up. And exhale, left hand lowers. And finish the exhale, tilting over. And inhale, rise back up. Let's twist. Exhale, twisting to the right. Arms find a place of foundation. Inhale, lift up, lengthen, pull your belly to the spine. And exhale, twist. Keep your arms straight for some leverage points to help support your spine. And then release. And lift up long and tall. And we'll twist to the left. Find the points of stability for your hands. Take another breath and lift up through the spine. Pull your belly to the spine. And exhale, twist a little deeper. Keep breathing as you hold the pose. And then release and come back up to center. Reach up tall, hands touch. Exhale to your heart and roll on over to all fours. If you want, you could use the, um, the towel underneath your knees, just as padding. When you get into table, just shake a leg out, shake your hips out, shake your shoulders out, and just have a little free form. Moving in whatever way your body is calling for as I bring your body into this pose. Does not have to be yogic. Just have a little freedom of movement. And then we'll get you into your um, cat cat. So spread your hands out wide, come on the rails, hands under shoulders or slightly forward of shoulders, knees under hips, toes tuck. Inhale, lift your hips, lower your belly, lift your heart, and exhale, reverse that. Point the tailbone down, lift the back up, hold chin to chest, curl in, exhale all the air out of your lungs, and inhale, reverse. I mean, this is the cow pose, lift the hips, lower the belly, push the heart through the gateway of the shoulders, and exhale, reverse, point the tailbone down, round in the spine, chin to chest, and then release, come back into table. Neutral spine, send the right foot back long and activate the muscles and lift the back leg up to hip height. Um, walk left fingertips forward, core is active, and lift that left arm to shoulder height. Good, strong, good strength pose, balance pose, and exhale. Come down, back and balance. Take the left foot back, activate, hug muscle to the bone as you lift the left leg up to uh, hip height, feet are at, or the foot is active, flex. Right fingers walk forward, lift the arm up to shoulder height and pull the core in, exhale lower. And now let's move, let's move dynamically. Opposite arm leg lift, same pose. Right leg, left arm, extend out, core is active. Exhale, come back down. Inhale, right arm, left leg, out long, and exhale down. One more time each side. Right leg, left arm, extend out, core is active, and exhale, lower. Inhale, extend out, Brahmana breath. And exhale, Lungana, back to grounding, back to stability. Let's twist. Shift your weight to the right side. Lift your left arm up. Look up. Exhale. Left wrist threads between right wrist and right knee. Lower down onto the shoulder. Release the head. Try to keep the hips level and breathe. And release. Come on back up. 
look up to the left and place it back down. Back in balance, let's do the other side. Shift your weight to the left. Lift your right arm up, look up and exhale. Twist, right wrist between left wrist and left knee. Release onto right shoulder, release the weight of your head onto the mat and enjoy this twist. And then inhale out and look up to, to the right hand and release down, coming back into neutral table. We're gonna do puppy pose with a hip opener. So I'm going to take it from the side here, left foot out wide, the sole of the foot touches the ground and the toes are pointing forward. Long, strong leg, level hips, left, and then walk your hands forward and find yourself at an angle. Let the hands pull your spine forward, but your hips are stronger. And you take the hips back toward the right ankle and just let this lengthen you through the spine and open your left hip. Really press down through that left heel and the left pinky toe and breathe. And then come back up. I'll do this from another angle uh, for the right side. So from table, just take the right foot out, toes point forward and the heel is on the ground. And then walk your hands forward for puppy pose. Hands connect and pull your spine forward, but your hips pull back towards that left heel and let this feel good. Breathing. And then walk your hands back up. Come back to table. Um, let's uh, lift right up into downward facing dog. So tuck your toes, lift your knees, and then lift your hips. When you come into downward facing dog, warm the body up, deeply bend both knees. And then wake the hips up, swing the hips side to side. And then check in with your head and neck. Let it be heavy. Shake, yes. Let it be very heavy. Shake, no. And then check in with your hands. Make sure they're spread out wide like a starfish. Press into index finger and thumbs. And then bend your knees and walk your hands to your feet. And, and come into the hang. So grab opposite elbows. Uh, let the head be heavy. Shake your shoulders. Let them be loose. Shake your hips. Uh, just try to find a little ease in this. Those knees are bent, so you're warming up the body with a passive uh, a hamstring lengthener, just letting gravity help you. You could sway the body back and forth. Really enjoy this pose. Let, let the, uh, take in the benefits of the inversion. Okay, and then from, uh, let go of your elbows from this forward fold. Walk your hands back to downward facing dog. Uh, lengthen through the legs, push a little bit of uh, the heart towards the thighs. And now I'm gonna bring you into plank briefly. So shift your body forward and then lower down to the ground. Your knees might touch. I just want you to come onto your belly. Uh, and, um, we're going to come into a locust pose. So uh, locust pose, I want you to think about this inhale will be the Brahmana breath and will lift up and it will activate your muscles, really strengthen your back postural muscles. And Brahmana breath is, I'm sorry, Brahmana is when we inhale and Langana breath is when we exhale. So for a variation of locust pose, um, I'm going to invite you to have your arms at your side, palms facing down, big toes touching and heels flaring out or falling away. This is your base. Uh, keep your back of your neck long. You're looking down at your mat and forward of your mat. And then I'm gonna invite you to lift up through the upper shoulders, head and neck. Feel strong and steady. And then I invite you to lift up the legs. You can keep the big toes touching if you can. If not, then let them go. But keep the legs lifting up as high as you can. Same with the shoulders. And then lift the arms. Everything is straight, lengthening, pointing away from the midline of the body, and you're breathing. Keep lifting, lift a little higher, and then exhale, lower down, and bring your arms up, and you can cross forearms or stack hands, and rest your forehead, and rock your hips. Hmm. and come back to home base and then lift up into sphinx pose find that elbows are under shoulders 
palms facing down, spread out wide, and bend your knees. Then uh, flex your feet and point your feet. Press down through elbows to lift up as high as you can, square your shoulders, gaze is forward of your mat. After a few flex and points of the feet, then add circles, ankle circles. Six meridians begin or end on the feet. Reverse the direction of the ankle circles. Good, and now I'm just gonna invite you to do a little twist. So let the lower legs fall to the left as far as you can, that, hip, that right hip can pop up, and then take a big Brahmana breath and inhale, grow larger, lift the hip a little bit more and press the feet down to the left. And then Langana, release, come back to center. Exhale, um, connect. We'll do the other side. So from Sphinx pose, you have your foundation. Take a breath in and exhale. The lower legs fall to the right and then add to it. Inhale, Brahmana breath. You uh, press the feet a little closer to the earth on the left side and you lift that left hip. You could even lift the arm just to grow a little bit bigger. Brahmana inhale breath. And then come out of that twist, Langana, back to stable base. Just doing it one more time. And maybe just adding to it, being careful of any, um, you know, sacroiliac uh, issues. This is a twist for the low back. Um, you add to it or you ease back from it. And um, once you go to one side, feel free to add to it by pushing off or pushing the feet down to closer to the ground. And then release and let go. Come on back down to release the, uh, the, the low back and rest your forehead and rock your hips. Big deep breath in and out. And then bring your hands to your heart, tuck your toes. Inhale up to table and exhale, lift up downward facing dog. And this time maybe walk the dog with one heel down and the opposite knee bent. Just coming a little deeper into this pose, letting your body wake up. And then bend your knees and walk your feet towards your hands and find yourself in this Uttanasana forward fold, bend your knees and add some length and just do that a couple of times. That your legs don't have to be straight, just meet your body where it's at. And then hands come to hips, pull your belly to your spine and inhale, lift up and then sweep the arms out wide and up high. Look up, Erdvastasana, hands touch, exhale them to your heart and come back or shake things out as you stand up and check in with your energies. All right, let's do the figure eight. Um, a, a loose loose figure eight, the crossover pattern is um, just a great thing for our body to re reset, reset our energies. We're gonna start at the hips and go up. And this is just a very uh, loose figure eight, alternate which um, hand goes on top. And take the Brahmana breath as you grow up, uh, as you inhale up and grow large, and then make your figure eight across the hands, alternating which hands on top, uh, the lung and a breath as you come down. Twisting lightly to the right, let's do the figure eight. Uh, Brahmana breath rising up, growing larger. Then you get to the top, reach up tall, and then exhale, figure eight, alternating the arms, lung and a grounding, settling, stabilizing. Twist to the other side. Figure eight up, grow large, in, in, inhale, Brahmana, reach up, and exhale, bring it down, settle in, Langana. And let it go. All right, let's do some standing sweeps. This is another great way to clear the energy. Step a little wider. I'm doing it from the side, but you could face me. I just so that you can see it. I can even do a demo of one. It's a the, the uh, hips of the knees and the ankles are soft through this. So you inhale up at a back bend and then exhale, sweep down and let the arms sweep up. Moving with your breath, you inhale up at a back bend and exhale, sweep down, deeply bend the knees, throw the arms back. Last one. And let it go. All right. If you have a block, use it. It's just a little stabilizing for our um, 
eagle pose. Eagle pose is our balance pose. Um, and if you don't have a block, that's not a problem. You could sit your, uh, put your sit bones against the wall and stabilize that way. Um, or you just rely on your own body and you talk in. This, we're doing the eagle pose, balance pose, because it crosses over the midline. So if you are using a block, it'll be outside your right foot initially. Take a deep bend in the knees, deeper than seems normal. And then as you're ready, bring the left leg to cross over the right leg. And you put the ball of the foot there for some stability. Check in, you wanna keep the knees bent the entire time. Quads are active, core is active, light squeeze of the glutes. And then arms go out to a T. And left arm underneath right arm, give yourself a hug. You could stay right here, or you can bring the backs of the hands together. Let your gaze go right past the forearms to a spot on the wall to give you some stability. And then bind the hands, uh, the lower fingers uh, bind the um, palm of the opposite hand. And then check in with your balance as you lift the sole of the left foot off the block. If it's okay, you might tuck that behind the calf and you breathe. You're drawing all your energy to the midline. You're crossing over, you're balancing, you're building strength and you're breathing. To come out of this pose, you unwind, unbind, and you step wide like a starfish. <laughs> and shake it all out. We'll do the other side. You, you might use the block, you might not. You might use your back, uh, you know, the low back or the sacrum right against the wall. And then if you get yourself into the balance position, you might try to push off and challenge your balance. All right, if you're, I'm gonna demonstrate with the block. Take a big Brahmana breath in, grow large, and then exhale, Lungana breath. Sink in, find a stable squat position. Right leg comes over, left leg, put the ball of the foot on there, or just a big toe. You just want a little stability to keep you from falling out of the pose. Draw your energy to the midline, active lower body. All those muscles are tight and engaged. Send your arms out wide. Right arm underneath left arm. Give yourself a hug. You'll gain a lot of stability by having a static point on the wall for your eyes. Keep breathing, keep active muscles. Uh, you can stay there with a hug or you can bring the backs of the hands together and bind the wrists. Make sure you can see past your forearm or whatever for your wrists or hands. And then check in with your balance. Lift the foot off of the block. You might tuck it behind your calf. <laughs> Wobbling is good. Wobbling means you're getting stronger. Keep breathing. Keep active muscles. And then to come out of it, unleash. Step out wide like a starfish. Big Brahmana breath. And exhale into your Langana breath. All right, let's do some of oh, the yin yang meridian clear because this is energy medicine yoga let's clear the yang energies come down the body they come down from the sky and then the yin energies come up the body they come up from the earth and so we work with the natural flow of meridians that's the whole idea all right um finding a good mountain pose your feet are parallel um press down through the outer edges of the feet and then lift up through the inner arches. Draw the inner thighs toward one another with like an internal rotation. Lift up through the core, open up through the heart. Inhale, arms out wide and up high, look up. Urdhvasana. I'm not gonna mirror you here, I'm just gonna do the same thing as you. Right hand on top of left hand, traces down the outside edges of the arms, the yawn meridians coming down the body. Um, down the ribs, pull across of the belt meridian, hands to the hips as you trace down the gallbladder meridian on the outside of the leg, off the pinky toe, shake your hands off. Two fingers come inside the big toe as we trace up the splay meridian, inside the foot, inside the calf, inside the thigh, flare out of the hip crease, come on up the side ribs to the armpit, and then back down to the side rib point that we tapped earlier, the end of the spleen meridian. Release your hands, inhale, arms out and up. We go again to do the other side of the body. Look up, Urdhvastasana. Now the left hand sits on top of the right hand as you begin to trace the outside edges of the arm, 
outside shoulder, outside ribs, pull across the belt meridian, a little bit of tension, and then press down the outside edges of the leg, pressing down, moving with the flow of the gallbladder meridian off the outside edge of the pinky. Shake off. Two fingers inside the big toe, trace up spleen. With an inhale, all the way up. And when you get to the end, circle right there and let it go. Let's, let's do our sun salutations. Uh, bring blocks to the front of your mat. Blocks if you have them. If you don't, no worries. You can be on spider fingertips. Find Tadasana. Sink the, your weight of your body into your heels. Lift up through the heart. And inhale, arms out wide and up high. Look up over the Tadasana. Turn your palms away, hinge at the hips, and exhale to bow. Bow to yourself, bow to your practice. Inhale, lift up halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, back to forward fold, Uttanasana. Hands on blocks or hands frame the feet. As you step the right foot back, straight leg lunge. Lower the hips, lift the heart. And then step back, downward facing dog. Lift the hips up and push the weight of the hips back towards the heels and lengthen through the spine and breathe. On your next inhale, shift forward to plank and squeeze everything. Broaden through the shoulders. Try to make a line of energy from your heel up through the crown of your head. And then we exhale. Lower down to the ground in a line. You can come knees to the floor if that's easier. Top, tops of the feet press down. Firm up your thighs. Inhale, lift your heart. Keep your elbows bent here for baby cobra. Pull your shoulder blades together and pull them down your back. Exhale, lower. Tuck your toes. Inhale to table. Exhale, lift up, downward facing the arm. Staying here for several breaths. Let the breath move through you deeply. Let your breaths slow your heart rate, bring you back to home base. Move between intensity and rest in the sun salutation. On your next inhale, lift your right leg up long behind you. Keep hip points facing down. Exhale, bend the knee, pull the knee in, and step it forward. Take your time. Do that in steps. You can bring knees to the floor. And then find yourself in this straight leg lunge. See if you can lower the hips closer to the earth. Lift your heart, lift your gaze. Then press off back foot to join the front foot. And you're in Uttanasana, forward fold. Lift up through the hips and point the crown of the head down and, and take in the benefits of this inversion. Now pull the belly to the spine, activate, and inhale, reverse swan dive, arms out wide and up high. Look up, bird, bust, and lengthen. Hands touch. Exhale, lungana breath. Steady, grounding, back to your center. We have time for another one. Let's do it. Inhale, arms out and up, Urdhva Stasana, lengthen. Exhale, swan dive, bow. Inhale, lift up halfway, half forward fold. Exhale, back down to your forward fold and step the left foot back, straight leg lunge. Lower the hips, lift the heart, back knee lowers, left hand touches the earth as we prepare to twist towards that front right leg. Right arm lifts up, add some wrist circles. Flick, one, flick, flick each finger one at a time and flick all, five, all fingers. And now just tracing this figure eight as you come bring this arm back down and you revolve to uh, have your shoulders face the mat. Now spin on this back left foot and connect the back heel to the earth as we are preparing to rise up into extended side angle. Right forearm rests on right thigh, palm faces up. Try to find the line. It's a straight leg, line of energy from that back left heel. Let's add this left arm in, sweep it in front of your face. It's not a soft dancer's arm. It's an active engaged arm. See if you can really pull the chest to open to this long edge of the mat. Maybe you look up, keep breathing. And then revolve the chest to face back down towards the earth as you step back, downward facing dog. Several breaths here. 
Deepen into this pose as we move through it several times. And inhale, come into plank and exhale, vinyasa. And rise into your back bend. Perhaps you lengthen your arms and come into full cobra. And exhale, lower, tuck the toes. And we'll meet in downward facing dog. You might come up through table or through plank. Lengthen and deepen your body here in downward facing dog. Let it feel good. Let the breath move through you with ease. We are opening and creating space in the body so the energies can flow more freely. On your next inhale, left leg lifts up long and tall. Exhale, bend the knee, pull it close to your ribs and step it forward. Wiggle, wiggle, do whatever you need to do to transition there. And then hips lower and gaze looks forward. Uh, back knee lowers, let's not forget the twist here. Right hand touches the ground. Pull your torso to twist towards this front left knee and then lift up long through your left arm. Uh, add some wrist circles. Flick each finger one at a time. And then all your fingers together. And to revolve out of this, just adding that figure eight uh, until you revolve your chest back down to face the front foot. Spin the back foot so that the heel touches the ground and begin to rise up so that you can come into extended side angle. Left forearm on left thigh. See if you can find that line of energy from the back right foot up the body. Add the right arm, and perhaps you look up at, to, at the bicep or pass the bicep to the ceiling. Open through the chest, really opening up your body to face the long edge of your mat. Keep breathing. And then you're gonna revolve, come back, Turn the chest to face the front foot. Press off back foot to join the um, front foot and find yourself in Uttanasana, forward fold. Lift the hips up, point the crown of the head down. And now let's rise up, pull the belly to the spine and inhale, lift up. Look up, Brahmana breath, grow large, long, tall. Hands touch, exhale, release and let it go. Nice big breath in. Nice big breath out. All right, let's get down to the ground. Losing time. Uh, step wide for your squat. Heels in, toes out. Hands at your heart. Take a breath in. Brahmana, grow large. And then exhale, Lungana. Come down closer to the earth. Come into your squat. Come as low as you can. And if you have a lot of tightness in uh, your groins and low back or hips, then you step wider and you keep yourself up a little higher to whatever you can manage, but keep active. Lift pelvic floor to navel to sternum. Keep long spine, keep broad chest. Look forward rather than looking down. Lasana. A lot of good things happening here. A lot of good benefits. To come out of it, your hands will come forward. One knee down, the other knee down. And let's come into an active descent into our supine pose to strengthen through our core. I'm going to bring you into a modification of boat pose, Navasana, which really activate the core. Once you get into the pose, I'm going to ask you to extend out, which will really call upon your core, and then come back up to boat pose. Uh, and then I'll ask you to go out long and then lower all the way down to the ground. All right, you've done this with me before. Um, you begin by finding sunbather pose, upside down W, and really lift your chest up, pull the shoulder blades together just to get this reversal of the forward curl. All right, keep your body in these angles, but bring your hands beside your knees, palms facing in. Lift one shin up um, parallel with the ground, foot, foot flex. Then lift the other one up. You're making a V here and keep breathing. This should be a challenging. If you can, strengthen, uh, straighten the legs. I can't. All right, and now extend, but don't touch the ground. Lengthen through the legs, lower the spine a little, and then exhale, come back up to boat pose. And now extend and try to keep everything above without touching, and then slowly let your weight release to the earth. Take a big refreshing 
breath in through the body and a big beautiful exhale out let go of what you don't need um bend your knees find yourself in constructive rest just allowing the breath to flow through the body which is encouraging the energies to flow through the body without obstruction all right let's um send the left leg long uh, bend the right knee. This is a version of Supta Baddha Gustasana without the strap. So hand on, right hand on top of the right bent knee, foot is flexed. Take that right knee out wide to the right. Uh, the foot can touch the ground. It's just wherever you get to, but I'd like you to aim to keep both uh, back hips on the ground as well as back, both back shoulder blades. And really press down through that left ankle, left heel for some stability. Now, bring that bent right knee up to the center line and let it cross over the midline and pass over to the left side of the body where your left hand takes over and pulls that right bent knee down to the left side of your body. You can send the right arm out wide and you can turn to look to the right. Let this feel good. The right hip is popped off the ground. This is a nice twist. Knees are bent and then release, come back to center and send the right leg long. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Get props out of the way. And lift that left foot off the ground. Uh, left knee is bent. Put the left hand on top of the bent knee. Right heel is pressing into the ground and right arm is out wide like a T. Take that left knee out wide. Really pressing down through the rectangle of the, of the spine, the back two back hips and the two shoulder blades. And enjoying this hip opening out to the left foot is flexed, and then bring that left bent knee up to center and push it over, cross the midline. The right hand takes over, the left hand goes out wide, and you roll over to the right and draw your left shoulder blade back down towards the mat, and you look to the left arm. And just enjoy this twist. Keep breathing. And then bring your body back up, the left leg up to center and bend both knees. Pull both knees into your chest and wrap your arms around your shins and just rock back and forth. You're massaging uh, the many points along the spine, but there's a very important one at your sacrum. So make sure you press the um, low back down to the ground as you rock and you'll be massaging that as well as all the other good spots. Then come to stillness, take a breath in, and then exhale, bring your nose towards your knees and hold here and breathe here curling in keeping this curl and keeping breath flowing and then release down uh, let it go let your legs go take your feet as wide as the mat we're just doing a little gentle windshield wiper the arms can go out wide on an exhale your knees fall to one side on an inhale the knees rise up just let this feel good let this bring ease to your body as you slow, with slow movement, we are warming down and moving to the final pose of this practice, Shavasana. When you're ready, unfurl the body long. Walk your heels to opposite corners of the mat and let the feet just flop open. With the arms, the traditional pose is uh, arms about 10 to 12 inches away from the body, palms facing up, but there's no rules. You could choose to place your hands on your lower dantian uh, below your navel and just really tune in to the energy that's moving through your body. You could choose to place hands on heart. You could choose to have hands out wide like a T or um, Open the shoulders and bring your arms into goddess pose with a 90 degree bend at the elbows and palms facing up. Experiment. Feel free, we'll stay in Shavasana for several minutes and you can feel free to move at any time if the position you've chosen uh, needs adjustment.
let this sound be like a mindfulness bell. And it calls your awareness back into your conscious body. Deepen the breath. Reanimate the senses. Invite small movement to fingers and toes, wrists and ankles. And when you're ready, I invite you to move and lengthen and stretch, adding a big Brahmana breath to grow large on your back, stretching, lengthening, whatever feels good. Eventually, all everyone will bend their knees and roll to one side and just pause here. Maybe an elbow supports your head, you're fully on one side of the body, you draw your bent knees a little closer to your chest, recognizing this is the fetal position, just keeping all of your energy in close. Sense the safety of your home base. And then press off with your hand and an elbow and bring yourself upright, keeping your attention inward, your eyes lowered and settle into uh, Sukhasana, the cross-legged position, the sweet spot. I invite you to bring your hands to the Lotus Mudra that we did at the beginning of this practice, starting with your hands in Anjali Mudra or prayer pose. Um, just open the middle three fingers, keep the pinky, the base of the palm and the thumbs connected. Rest your thumbs at your heart. And remember the uh, symbolism of this mudra is giving and receiving. What do you have to offer? And what is it that you need? Articulate these daily. And now let's end this practice and seal it with a single chant of Om. Exhale fully. Inhale deeply. Om. I invite you to lift your thumbs up to your center of your forehead, your third eye chakra. And join me as we share this Sanskrit word, this greeting, this word namaste, which means that the light of me sees and honors the very same light in you. Namaste. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it.